Okay, so in this session, we're going to understand distance between two cell centers. So let me write it down. This is the concept of uh, uh, this is the concept of frequency reuse. Okay, so we are continuing on the path. So this is okay. This is going to be distance between cell centers. <clears throat> okay, so we can understand what is the distance. Okay, between the cell centers. So if I have a cluster looks like this. See, I improved. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter, right? Um, yeah. So, this is the cluster, and we need this distance, this distance to this distance. Okay. This is the distance we want, right? So, if you see here, if you observe, then I can make a triangle here. So, this is going to be my triangle, and I will precisely name it. This is the B point. This is the Q point, this is the O point, and if you see, there are two midpoints. One midpoint is this, and other midpoint is this. And let me just change a color just to represent these two points so that you can understand. So I if I if I go here and I give a name P, and this point is says as A. Okay. <clears throat> I hope you remember. I, I hope you will get it. Okay. Now I also label here. So, what I will label is OA is equals to R. So, R is the distance. If you want to take it as a distance, if you want to take as a radius, you can take it as. Okay. If R is the, is the thing, then this O and this A, this is the line which says R. Why, why is this? Is because if you see here, this is the cell center. And if you make a, a circle here, if you create a circle from this point, then that circle is going to be, uh, this circle is going to be having this radius r. And that's why we, we, we say this distance from this point to this point, we have this radius. If you see, this is the half, okay? So that's why we have r. Now we will say that ab is equals to r divided by 2. Why? Is because if you see these two points, this is the half of the complete radius. Okay, you're getting it? So, this is R divided by 2. <clears throat> okay, if you don't understand it, you can take this point and make a round circle. If you make a round circle, then this complete thing is going to be R and if you are making a, a, making a half of it, then it is going to be R divided by 2. Okay, so now if I want to uh, complete a path from O, from O, sorry, from O to B, then I will write O, B is equals to which leads to o a plus a b so it means it means r plus r divided by 2 which it will give you 3 r divided by 2 so your o b is 3 r divided by 2 i hope you are getting it okay now let's go further so now if i take triangle o p a this is the triangle that I am taking. Okay, this is the triangle. So if I take a triangle O P or O A P or O P A, then oh, let me just write O A P, which is the uh, right way to write. Okay, so O A P, and then from the triangle properties, I can write it down that O P. That is the thing that I want. I want to calculate my O P. What is the distance of O to P? is equals to OA sine 60 degree. Okay. So, this is sine 60 degree. If you calculate it, that OA, then OA, OA is what? Is It's R. So, I will write it down R and sine 60 is going to be root 3 by 2. So, here we have OP, which says R multiplied by root 3 divided by 2. <clears throat> now, what exactly we want? We want these cell centers. That means this cell center to this cell centers. What is the distance? It is OQ. And I will represent my OQ with D. So this is the distance. Okay. We want to calculate this. OQ. We want to calculate OQ. So OQ, if you see here, if I will write D here in, in, in place of OP, then D is equals to, I will precisely write it down <coughs> root 3 divided by 2 into r mod. Why? It's because oq, oq is made up of op 
and then PQ. Okay, OQ is made up of OP plus PQ. So this can be OP. This is your. This is going to be your OP plus I need PQ. So your PQ is again going to be same. Root three divided by two R. See this. This uh, this complete geography here. This complete uh, you know geographical representation. It's not accurate, and that's why you you think that OP is small and PQ is large and something like that. But please keep that in mind that they are they in the distance they are very same because you see we are joining two cell centers and it can be joined when we take the you know the half of distance and this is going to be the midpoint of it. So that's why we this distance is equals to this distance and that's why we have OP plus PQ which is we we already had we ha already had calculated this OP which is this one. And then PQ is again going to be the same thing. So if we calculate this, if we calculate in a in a in a mathematical term, then it leads to root three r. So your d here represents what d what this d represents. It represents distance between cell centers. I hope you are getting it. What does it mean is this OQ from one cell to another cell? If you want to go, then you need root three r as a distance. This is the distance we had calculated. I hope you are getting it, right? Okay. <clears throat> Now that that leads to another another concept, and that concept is known as again that concept is known as. Let me give you a question here. A question leads to that. It says. Let me draw a cluster here first of all, and then I will uh, put that question. So this is my okay. Come on, you never be straight, like okay. Then again, I'm so sorry. It will take some time. Uh, I hope that's okay now. Let me draw one more thing here. Uh, okay, I hope that's okay. <clears throat> so this is my cluster. Again, I drawn it the cluster. Now let let me let me just you know make a frequency here. So this is the frequency f three here. Now my question is, if this I'm um, sorry, let me just if this f three is used here, then again let me just put that question here. What that question says. Oh, let me just find it out where my question is. Yeah. So the question is, it is specifically in the in the in the cellular system. So I'm just asking you. So where this F3, where this F3 frequencies can be used again, can be used again. So th why this question arises? Because we have a concept called as frequency reuse, which says we can reuse the frequency. But the real question is where we can reuse. How can we know that this frequency can be reused it again? I can put my f3, but then there is a problem. I can put f3 anywhere, right? But this is not possible. We need to give a perfect allocation to these frequencies, or we have to plan our frequencies in a precise way. So the question is, how can I use or reuse this f3? How can I do it? So for that we actually have. <clears throat> so this is a cluster, okay? And I can precisely, uh, precisely use uh, frequency reuse concept here with the help of two variables. So one variable is i, and other variable is j. With the help of these two variables, I can I can calculate it that in in this cluster where exactly I can put my f3 to make a better frequency planning. So there are cases, okay? So this ij values you can take. I mean, it's it's not random, but you can take your own ij i, I and j value. So let's say my i value is equals to one, and j value is equals to also one. Then what you have to do is you move your i, move i such a way, move i such a way. That it connects 
टू सेल सेंटर्स टू सेल सेंटर्स Either you can go uh, go diagonally or anywhere. Okay, so it needs that you need to connect two cell centers with the help of I. Then after for the J, move your J sixty degree. Move J sixty degree anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise from the position of I. From the direction, sorry, from the direction of from the direction of I. So what I mean to say is, let me reframe it. So I'll just make this above. Okay. Now, so the question is F3. Where I can use this F3, F3 right? Uh, so what you can do? So this this what? Let me change the color also so that you can you can understand it. Um, let me make a green color here okay so now this is the cell center here you can see this is my cell center here so i can i need to connect two cell centers with the help of i so what i can what, what i going to do is i will go diagonally and i will connect actually cell center is should be here but let me just my cell center is here somehow you understand you just understand that we need to connect two cell centers so i'm going diagonally and i'm connecting cell centers so please this is this is not actually cell center right it is not, actually this cell center is here but my line is somehow you know misaligned so please bear with me so this is your cell center so i will elongate it because i need a reference of you know j as i told you that i is such a way it connects two cell centers so i connected two cell centers diagonally and from the respect of i i need i need a reference here what i going to do is i am going to go anti clockwise 60 degree okay anti clockwise 60 degree and wherever i am going to stop with this 60 degree that is going to be my j so this is going to be your i and this is going to be my j you getting it so this is 60 degree here this is 60 degree anti clockwise from here to here and wherever i am stopping you just need to connect the dots so again cell center is going to be connected so this this is the distance and what is this distance this is the distance the frequency is going to be reused f3 is going to be reused you getting it so f3 where exactly i can i can reuse my frequency from here to here this is the location where i can use my f3 frequency now let's understand one more thing so let's say my case is now i is equals to 2 and j equals to 1 this is the case what i'm going to do is let me draw it again my uh, this is going to be horrible that's okay now so i'm just giving you a reference here so just just bear with me okay uh, this this is taking much time let me draw it here okay so your f3 frequency again it is here here and somewhere okay so now where i want to use uh, how can i how can how can i reuse this f3 frequencies so that it doesn't uh, you know uh, what do you call it doesn't uh, interfere with the other thing so let's say this is my cell center here the case is i equals to 2 and j equals to 1 then i will go diagonally and i will connect my cell center so this is the cell center 1 but then you see this is i equals to 1 but my i equals to 2 so what i going to do i expand it i will go further i will further connect my cell centers so now this is going to be i equals to 2 because we have we have, we have make two swaps here one and then again two so this is going to be i equals to 2 that means this complete thing is equals to i equals to 2 i will i will elongate it so that for the reference for j what i going to do i will go from here 60 degree and anti clockwise i will move it and then whatever the angle i am getting and whatever the the position i am getting in the at the cell center this is going to be the location of f3 the next frequency to use i am going to i am going to use in the cell is going to be this cell where i can use this f3 frequency so the distance you can calculate is is in this way okay you are getting it i hope you are getting it so now the case is let's say the case is 
i equals to 2. So in case if your i is equals to 2 and your j is also equals to 2, then what will happen? Then let's say this is the location where your f3 is used and now again you want to reuse this f3 frequency then you will go i equals to 1 this is i equals to 1 and then you will proceed to i equals to 2 so this is i equals to 2 you are diagonally moving right you are diagonally moving and then i will elongate it and then from this elongation you will take anti clockwise 60 degree and wherever this stops you will point this is your j equals to 1 keep that in mind this is your j equals to 1 you will take another step for j equals to Two. and wherever in the cell it is going to be stopped this is the precise location your f3 is going to be reused again so you are getting it whatever the number you are getting in the variable i equals to 3 or i equals to 4 you swap it and then you join it okay with the i and j so i will uh, connect these two dots okay and then this is going to be the distance between cell centers I hope you are getting it okay now uh, let me also give you the uh, the definition uh, not the definition but just the equation so the equation of reuse distance I'm not I'm, I'm not actually deriving my reuse distance here if you have any doubt in this section then uh, I mean precisely in the reuse distance equation I can derive it uh, but if you want this derivation then please you know uh, uh, put that request in the comment section so that I can make an extra video on this because this reuse distance doesn't you know count in the I mean it is not necessary to create it but if you want it precisely I can create it uh, just uh, put a request in the comment section I'll be waiting for it okay so this is the reuse distance and the equation is pretty simple I will I will say our reuse distance is equals to represented by ru so ru is equals to i square plus j square plus 2 i j cos pi by 3 root 3 r i think root 3 oh sorry not in the division it's in multiplication so root 3 r and this is actually r square but now we had removed that square and we put uh, that uh, that in the under uh, uh, square root okay so this is the equation of uh, reuse distance I will also precisely labeled it where I will write where r equals to the cell radius or the cell distance so this is your cell radius in that cos pi by 3 is equals to 1 over 2 and your r u is equals to reuse distance okay i hope you are getting it and this ends your frequency reuse concept in the next session we're going to understand channel assignment strategies okay how we can precisely you know uh, assign the channel to the cell and then from the channel how can we precisely uh, allocate the frequencies to the users that we're going to see okay i hope you understand it if you have any doubt you can please uh, drop a comment in the comment section i will be happy to help you and thank you so much for listening to me and if you haven't subscribed my channel i again insist you to please subscribe it okay uh, thank you so much